From a secret location in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Give me a darn break. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's every kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host right at our telephone number. You're going to need it. 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. How many of you are tired of this? Just curious, because I've been through this, okay? So you're dating a chick. And uh, you're having a good time and things are going well. And somewhere along the way, something changes. And this can happen. You know, you ever have this going? Like you, you get something really good going. You know, you're having stupid thoughts like about marrying her or moving in with her or something like that. You've stopped seeing all the other sluts and whores that you've been dating and you kind of narrowed it down to her. And then one day something goes wrong. So you start asking some questions. And you start to find out that the reason she's not as hot on you as she had been, the reason she is not as excited about you as she had been, the reason she is now giving you all those pregnant pauses, you know the pregnant pauses, huh? Honey, what's wrong? Not this. Come on, you haven't said anything now for several minutes, and you never shut up. What? what uh, what's the problem? Nothing. Are you thinking about it? No. And this starts happening a lot. And finally, after you harangue and harass her, and you try to get to the bottom of it, she tells you what the problem is. Her fill-in-the-blank, her best friend, her sister, her mother, Somebody else in the family, her coworker, childhood friend, somebody, for some reason doesn't like you. Whether or not they've actually ever met you. So even though you had a perfectly good situation, you are now in a position where you're on the way out because somebody passed judgment on you. This is very common because women never, ever have, first of all, women never have sex without telling somebody. Don't ever think you can have sex with a female without her telling someone. Her best friend will know. Her sister will know. Her sisters will know. Her cousins, female cousins, they'll know. Her friends will know. All her friends will. First, it starts with the best friend, and then the other friends will be led into it. In many cases, uh, if she's old enough, her mom will know. And they will know everything, too. They will know what you do for a living. They'll know where you work. They will know how you met. They will know when you first had sex, how many dates it was. They will know if the sex is any good. They will know what kind of endowment you're uh, providing or not. Whether you're good in the sack or not. The likelihood that you will propose, the likelihood that you would get married, the likelihood that you would have kids, they know everything. When you walk into a room with these cackling hands, they have they have chewed you over. They've chewed you over like a rawhide bone. There's no doubt about it. And what's really maddening is when you're in a relationship with somebody and it all seemed to be going so well. Here's an example, all right? You're away at college and you meet a chick. 
And at this time, while while you're both like in a college that is far away from home, things are going well. She is removed from the influence of her best friend or her mom or, you know, the circle of friends she used to hang out with. Nobody's been able to pass judgment on you because they've never seen you. And because she's been so busy with you, she hasn't had time to, like, uh, you know, give them the whole story. So there you are. You're practically living together in the dorm or you're practically, uh, you know, you're dating exclusively or whatever you're doing. And then maybe you have, like, you know, spring break winter break, something like that. She goes home for the holidays, you go home for the holidays, or worse yet, you go home with her for the holidays, and everybody gets a chance to weigh in on you. And there's somebody in the mix who just doesn't like you. You rub them the wrong way. The friend, the family member, somebody thinks you're the wrong guy for the job. Maybe mom has an idea of fixing your girlfriend up with somebody else. The point is, if you're going to call me this hour at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, here's who I want to talk to this hour. So you had a perfectly good thing going until the females in her life started weighing in on you, and suddenly having nothing to do with anything you did or said to her. It all has to do with how she related your attributes to her friends and family, somewhere along the way, somebody said something like, he's not serious about you. He's not going to marry you. What kind of guy is this? This guy's a loser. I don't like this. What's this guy studying? Poetry? Are you kidding me? What kind of guy is that? Some conversation like that took place, and suddenly she's cold to you. Suddenly the sex isn't there, or it isn't what it was. Suddenly there's all those pregnant pauses and quiet moments. Suddenly you don't know what the hell is going on. And you are puzzled, perplexed, maybe even angry. So if that's you, call me at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. If you have been in a relationship with a girl who uh, was, was really high on you at one point, and suddenly, for no apparent reason, she just lost interest, and upon further questioning, you found out, well, it had nothing to do with anything you did, anything you said. It had to do with somebody else's opinion. About you. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 Tom. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 866. On occasion, I may wake up and uh, be dreaming that, hey, no one's in the house, it's empty. What would it be like just to wake up, go work out, play some tennis, play a little bit of piano, go for a bike ride, and then go out and hang out? You want to know? <laughs> Stop by my home tomorrow morning. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5800 Tom. That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Okay. Here we are. He had a relationship that was going just hunky dory until somebody else weighed in. Let's say hello here to <laughs> Paul. On the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Paul. Tom, how you doing? You're wonderful, Tom. Thank you. Well, Tom, I'm where I start? Uh, I was in the military. I uh, ended up getting involved with one girl, left the military, came home. One girl wanted a date. She was in her 30s. I was in my 20s. You know, all I just wanted to do was go out there and have fun. We started. Uh, she just was very forceful. Well, anyway, uh, come to find out she ends up pregnant. I'm like, dude, how do you end up pregnant? Like, we're, you know condoms the whole time i was you know we were together but i was like well you know that's my luck two of her friends called me up later on they tell me that they, she admitted to them that she poked all my condoms just to get pregnant baby gets here i was like well it's my responsibility i gotta take care of them i start taking care of them um all of a sudden the mother jumps in 
after uh, me, me and my son have been, you know, seeing each other for since she was six years old. And now she won't let me see my son. I haven't seen my son for about nine years now. And uh, the mom just refuses to let me see him. They want to change uh, his last name, and they also want to uh, do some other stuff against my will with my son. So I pretty much got messed up there. Oh, boy. Yeah, they're suing me. I, well, I paid like 1100 a month child support. I go to the court system. Of course, I don't care about what, you know, what your situation is. And it uh, just so happened that the judge is a female judge, and but she just she didn't care. You know, uh, I'm paying eleven hundred dollar a month child support. And I tell them there's no way that I can afford this. They said we don't care if you have to work three jobs. We don't care if you eat. We don't care if you sleep. That's their exact word they told me. And then I told them I said, well, I haven't seen my son in in nine years. And they're like, well, get an attorney. I said, how can I afford an attorney? I'm paying eleven hundred dollar a month in child support. I can't even afford an attorney. And the judge told me that, and the attorney general told me that. I mean, it's just, uh, it, it just it's, it's, it's horrible. I mean, the, nobody's here to help you. The mom uh, is from Germany. So she, she says that, that if I try to even come see her uh, son to get the court system avail, uh, involved, that she would take my son to Germany where her family's from. So I'm kind of screwed there. That was not a good idea. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. But, you know, I guess she learned from it, and, you know, I just... Of course, uh, I, I don't take their word for it, like you said. Whether they said they're on the birth control, and I don't hide, I don't place my condoms where any other people can find them anymore. Well, good luck to you, Paul. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Wasn't even what we were talking about, but he had to get it in. He, he very sad. He very upset. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Lisa. On the Tom Likas show, hello. Daddy, oh, what's up? No, uh, doing okay, darling. That'll teach that guy to, like, you know, provide his own condoms, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Okay, well, here's my story. I was married to an English guy. We went to England, where his family is. His mother fully hated me on spot. And instead, she would speak French and Italian to him, so I couldn't understand what they were saying. And make a long story bearable, we were there maybe a couple of months, and I woke up one morning, and he looked at me, and he said, I'm not in love with you anymore. Go home. And I'm like, excuse me? He said, well, go talk hey, to Hey, we're on the oh, air. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Mm. Hello? Yeah. I didn't mean to say that. That slipped out. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted you to know that it happens to girls, too. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it does. <laughs> I am sure it does. Yeah, and she told me to enjoy my 20-year-old skin at the time, so there it is. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that, Lisa. Hey, you rock. I love listening to you, so take care of yourself, okay? Thank you. <laughs> boy, oh, boy. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. All right, so you're in this perfectly wonderful relationship, and then somebody else weighs in. Who weighed in? Jacob on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? Doing great. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Well, I, um, I'm a white guy, and I uh, like to date black women, and uh, I really experienced a real cross of cultures here. This one gal I was with, she's a uh, Nigerian. Moved out here when she was about 13, grew up in the Bible Belt, and came out to L.A., area I'm at. And uh, her parents were both, you know, first-generation Nigerians as well. And they weren't digging on me. I never met them, but they heard about me. I'm in college. It just wasn't quite enough for them that I wasn't black. And not only that, but I wasn't African. Um, before I was in contact on the phone with her mother, things were great, you know. And then... Uh, it was funny. Then she started talking about, you know, maybe not having sex for a while, getting back to the Bible. And I thought, oh, crap, this is this is getting a little different here, you know. And then uh, things went back to normal again. She got in a car accident, went down there, took care of her for like a week. You know, I'm talking about helping her get on and off the can type of stuff. And then uh, tells me she loves me. I leave. And then she calls me up and says, maybe we should take a break. And I thought, hmm, okay, you know. She'd gone back home for couple days to get some help from the parents and stuff and I knew I knew what was going on there you know 
And uh, she was never straight up with me about it. And I just had to tell her, you know, maybe I'm just not the guy you're looking for. And I didn't want to waste my time after that. You know what I mean? She wasn't real with me about it. But I knew there was something there, some undertone, kind of the ones you're talking about. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I don't know. What do, you, what do you think about, like, people dating in cross cultures like that? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm very open-minded. I'm colorblind. But, you know, somebody who's African and just being me in a whole different up- upbringing... You think you think it's worth a try again, or no? I've 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 always gone across cultures because yeah. I won't date American women. I just won't do it. <laughs> right, right. So oh. uh, at, at the very least, your parents have to have been born in another country, or I'm out. Right, right. Well, you know, I just wanted to bring that up because that was a big spin for me. It was a, a kind of a reality check about how some things can go. The conflict between cultures there. Just something I wanted to let you know about. And thank you for your time. Congratulations on the good ratings, and I love your show. Love you guys. Thank you so much, Jake. Adios. Appreciate the call, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Travis on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. First, first off, I'd like to start off by apologizing because I basically broke one of your most important rules. I got married at a young age, and worst of all, she had a daughter with her. Um, so, okay, so basically at the time that I married her, I was still a student. I was a music student in USC, and her uh, previous husband, well, like whoever the child's da- uh, father was, was a musician as well, and he felt miserably. So then her uh, her child let her know that she didn't like me, and I was just going to end up as another re- re- reject musician like her dad. So her mom dumped me, I divorced her, banged her daughter a couple of years later, and now I'm making six figures a year, and she's with another loser. And I just thought I'd let you know that you have changed my life dramatically. I love that. You know what, Tom? Congratulations. Hey, you can't I'm say sorry. the S word on the air. Come on. I had something in my throat. I'm sorry. That's yeah. not why you said the S word. Come on. All right. I'm sorry, Tom. But yeah, man, that's it. I just thought I wanted to let you know. And thank you for everything, Tom. You really are a life changer. You know what? Take me out with a screaming orgasm and a fart. Here you go. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Sergio on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. That's what I'm talking about, Tom. That's what I'm talking about. Man, you are my father, let me tell you, man. And I appreciate everything, man. Let me make this jump to it. All right, my story goes with um, my girl. She's actually, um, she's a little bit younger than me. She's 18 and all. But the main situation is she's got a roommate, and I'm pretty sure that she's the one that's hating on me because, I mean, everything's been going good. I mean, we were friends at first. You know, we're hanging out, having a great time, gym. You know, like we're straight-up buddies. And then it moved into, it moved into, you know, um, you know, now we're having sex, obviously, but, um, I think the friend is like into me. So she's kind of trying to like muscle in, or I don't know what the deal is, man, but I'm so pissed. I'm pissed because everything was going great, man. And I, and it sucks because I don't even put myself in this kind of situation. I mean, I'm a like this one-on-one student and getting into this has probably been my biggest mistake so far. I don't know, man. It's crazy that you're that you're bringing this story up because I've been listening to you for about three years now, and I stopped listening after a little while when you guys got off San Diego, so now I can only catch you online every once in a while. But as soon as I turned you on, man, you guys were talking about this. I was like, damn, this is me. i got to talk to my dad right now. Absolutely. So... I don't know. I don't know what what I should even get into right now. I mean, well, at twenty one, you shouldn't have a girlfriend anyway. I know, I know. And the thing is that, like, she's totally cool about me going out and partying and getting with other chicks. She's already told me that, so it's like win win. You know, I got my booty call on the side. She doesn't mind that I go out and hook up. So I don't even know what. I don't even know, dude. Like, but she pisses me off when she did did this. Just recently to me, like, cut me off for three days. Like, she's out doing her own thing, you know, like going to Mexico and crap. And I'm like, you know, I mean, I should just not even be tripping about her, man. I should just cut her loose. I should just DTB right away and get out of this. Well, I think you should. And then I think you shouldn't have a girlfriend. 
Yep. Dang. I know, man. I, I'm, I'm going to have to get out of this ASAP because, I mean, I never, I mean, I have never, like, been this frustrated with a chick because I just, I mean, hump them and dump them, man. That's what I do. God dang, man. And now I'm, like, oh, frustrated. Can't even concentrate on my classes. <laughs> No, well, I understand, but that's uh, you got to get out of this. That's that's why that's why I tell you: wait until you have succeeded in college. Wait until you're into your career before you have a, a, a committed relationship. I know. I mean, I have got to. I got to straight up, man. I got to get out of this. That's the main. That is the main issue. Oh, man. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you do. I, huh? You do. You got to get out. So just get out. Yeah, I mean, I've already, what I've done so far, like, it's been three days, and I just got a text message from her, like, right when you started talking about this subject, and she hadn't talked to me for three days, because she did her own little thing, and I was like, you know what, man, I'm not even going to answer this girl's call one more time. I'm not answering her calls, I mean, her emails or nothing, it's been already three days, like, and I've just been, you know, blowing her off, so that's what I'm going to do. That's what you got to do. Be a ninja like I am and just, just disappear. Ninja That's thing. it. You know what I'm saying, Tom? Yes. I just so do that. it. That's what I'm doing. Okay. I'm gone. You're gone. I agree. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Tim on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How you doing today? And I do care. I'm doing great. Great. I got a little story for you. I got a, I had a girlfriend for a while back in high school. You know, I was stupid as hell, really. Um, I was going out with her for about three months, and I really liked her. She was, she had a great personality and everything. You know, I was trying to be a nice guy and stuff. This is all before I started listening trying to you. Trying to be a nice guy. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was before I started listening to you. But, uh. Anyway, what happened is I was going out there, and her friend, her best friend, Rachel, that she's known for her whole life, I, uh, from what I've heard, um, told her that I was I was not the guy. Um, I was, you know, basically what you were describing earlier. I was just a loser, stuff like that, you know? And then about a month later, uh, Kaylee is the name of my girlfriend, and she uh, she was ended up sleeping with, uh, she broke up with me. And then a week after she broke up with me, I found out she was having sex with Rachel's brother. Okay. Yeah. So, and then, um, so then I was like, oh, I was all torn up, you know, I'm trying to be like a nice guy and everything. And her friends are talking crap on me. And she, uh, eventually what happened is, uh, she started, uh, spreading lies and rumors and stuff about me and about, just all sorts of bad stuff about me around uh, school. I was still in high school, and uh, everybody turned me into, like, the bad guy. And uh, she uh, eventually what happened is she, like, ended up losing all of her friends. So she doesn't really have any friends anymore. Now everybody's on my side because, like, I was able to kind of prove what went on. I had a bunch of my friends there with me. Uh, they were there when she broke up with me and everything, and that's how it goes. And then recently... She was sleeping with my best friend, Mark. So why do you even have any interest in this person at this point? No, I don't. I don't anymore. I just wanted to call and and uh, and uh, let you know what was going on. I've been trying to call you for a long time, So, and this was a perfect subject for me. But, but you see, don't we tell you not to have a girlfriend? What's that? Don't we tell you not to have a girlfriend? Yeah, yeah, you do, and I, I believe you 100% now. I've been... I'm getting more ass than a toilet seat lately, so uh, I'm pretty good. Don't be, uh, don't be going out there making that same mistake. No, nope, never again, never again, man. Okay, it's all, it's all thanks to you, Tom. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Tim. Thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. It's Mike on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, Dad. Hey. <laughs> All right, we'll get a better connection on you. Let's say hello to Luis on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Okay, we'll try to find Luis, and we'll say hi to Dave on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. 
Mr. Likas. Yes. From Las Vegas. Yes, sir. I uh, wanted to call in about your topic. I, you know, I had a girl for six years. Um, spoke up with her about six months ago. Her friends never liked me from the start. Family never liked me. And uh, unfortunately, it was uh, the kind of the uh, straw that uh, broke the camel's back on that. Um, they were always talking uh, doggy doo doo about me, um, and um, it was it was seriously. Um, I know exactly exactly what you mean, and I, I I feel for all the other guys out there like that. But uh, you know, she was uh, she was a good girl. I I I I, I did care about her, um, but. Uh, yeah, it was. It Why was, would you yeah. care for somebody who could be so easily dissuaded about being with you? Well, you, you know what? We were together forever, though, and um, but that even worse. Well, it was it was really from the very beginning. I mean, I, I guess I should have seen it. Um, I mean, how could I, you? How could you be in love with somebody who would let her family or friends talk them out of being with you? Um, I don't know. And these these were the friends that would pull. She her doesn't up. love you as much as you love her. Yeah, I I I guess so. But uh, you guess would, so. Uh, they they would basically pull her away from me anytime they got a chance. Took her out to Glamis, out to Vegas, out to wherever. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just it was really obvious I was never liked in that relationship. And uh, yeah, it, it 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 ruined the whole thing. Yeah, but 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 the point is, she had control over that. She did, yeah, absolutely. I, I I totally agree. So she didn't do anything about it, did she? She did nothing about it. I think I think she actually chimed in when uh, when uh, you know when she. So said, well, so what know, does that say about you that you would be in love with somebody like that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tom, um, I don't know what it says about me. It probably it, it's it's probably no good though. Uh, I, I probably stuck around. I, I probably stuck around way too long. You know, so. You probably did. Thank you for the call. Tom. 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 Tom like us. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. We're listening to you last night. We're on our way to go get a bite to eat. And, uh, you know, I kind of said a remark of, like, why do all women want to have control? And she smacked the crap out of my head. Like, why do you listen to that Tom Likas? He's turning you into a jerk. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show. All right, so there you are. You have what you consider to be a good relationship. Then one of her uh, advisors, family, best friend, other friends. Well, they jump right in and say, oh, no, no, you don't want to be with this guy. And suddenly it ruins it for you. Ranya. Ranya? Yes, hello? Yes, hello? Hi. Okay. You said... What is that in the background? Ba, 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 What is that in the background? Oh, what? Here. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's supposed to be off. Uh, you know what it was, and somebody in the car just turned it on. Oh. Tell them to keep their hands off the radio. Okay, his hands are off the radio. Hi. Hi. Okay. I, I, you know what? I don't really listen to you, and I just started, and I have a question. You're sitting here saying, don't have a girlfriend. So basically, your motto is, don't be in a relationship. Yeah. Right? Okay. So men are supposed to live their life just screwing around with woman after woman, not having anything meaningful because they're afraid that they're going to get hurt or they're going to get stuck with that girl who everyone is telling. No, just her. because it's more fun. How is that more fun? Are you kidding me? Hello? More fun for how long? For a year? More fun than listening to you open your trap. Are you kidding me? Absolutely, it's more fun. What? I don't think so. Because in the end, you're going to die. You think alone. listening to you open your trap would be... Uh, you know, I'd rather die alone than hearing you, your voice, over and over and over. You know what? Maybe that would be true for you, but I think that you're giving the crappiest advice to every single man out there. Why is that? idiot only an idiot would sit there and think it would be better for him to screw around with any my... man hearing your voice knows i'm right uh, you know what i don't think so i think every man hearing my voice who is hurt or who doesn't or isn't mad i mean you know what i cannot imagine i mean i'm sure you've had sex but i cannot imagine getting aroused at the sound of your voice i just can't 
Well, I guess that's you because, you know, I, I'm not going to demean myself by allowing someone like you or someone who... Watch your mouth. We're on the air. Excuse me? Watch your mouth. We are on the radio. Okay, well... Are you too stupid to know that the S word, the F word, the C word, they're not allowed on the air? Did you did you just drop here from another planet? Me? Huh? I believe the word timed, right? So you had enough time to bleep it out. Uh, you, but put it this way. If we have to bleep you again, we're moving on. Don't do it again. Do you hear me? No. Well, I'll tell you what. Next time you do it, you're gone. I'm going to lose him. I lost him. You didn't lose anything. I thought I lost you. I said the next time you do it, you're gone. Oh, no, I won't do that again. I apologize. Oh, you were not apologizing. You were you were bragging about it. Are you really fake? Or you're seriously, it's a sad situation for you. You and your filthy mouth. You know what? It's seriously. Sad. What, ma'am, would want to hear this? bunch of men out there who actually might actually take your advice. No, no. You know what? There's a bunch of men out there who just want to get access to the space between your legs, and that's it. Excuse me? If they can bind and gag you, that'll be the best way to go. If they could bind and gag me. Okay. Yeah. I think that as far as it goes in the sense of maybe trying to get anything out of anything from your show you're just trying to get men who are pissed off lonely and basically oh, any man has been with you probably feels exactly like that really no you know what it's sad i wish i did because then maybe i would know how you feel but it's unfortunate. darling i'm not the least bit angry you know why because i've become a multi-millionaire entertaining shrews and shrieking bug-eyed nutcases like yourself not angry i just think it's sad oh please you give men the advice that you're giving. I do. Here, I'm sitting here next to a man who thinks it's so funny and so cool that you say what you say and you do what That's because he knows what you're like. He knows I'm right. He completely thinks you're wrong. That's why he wanted you to hear it. You're right. He has to say you're wrong in order to keep getting laid, so... uh Cold. He actually believes you're right. He actually thinks that what you're saying is going to be meaningful in the end when he's 55. There we go. So you see, even he thinks I'm right. And that's exactly why I'm calling, because you're putting things out there in people's minds. I can't make anyone believe anything they don't believe. Are you in a relationship? Are you in a relationship? By design, no. And you're not in a relationship. No, I, I doesn't mean I don't get laid. But the, but the thing is, being in a relationship doesn't necessarily have to be about getting laid. Well, I'm sure with you, that's, it doesn't mean that. But uh, believe me, I'm more about getting laid than having relationships. Okay, so until when? How old are you? Until when? Until you're 60? You think that's going to matter when you're 60? Who knows? 70, 80? Who knows? Come on now. I mean, seriously, in the end, you're going to... Okay, if people go by your model in life... Darling, if, if being alone at the end means not being with somebody with a trap like yours, I'd rather be alone. There will be no family values. There will be nothing. Family There's values? If I have to listen to you or somebody who sounds like you, I'd rather live alone. I, I live alone. I like living alone. And, and, and for God's sake, if you're the alternative, believe me, nobody's getting the key to my place. Nobody. You're so absolutely miserable. And the I guy, oh yeah, well tell the guy who's with you who agrees with me that he's miserable. Go ahead, tell him. You know what? No, he, I don't understand why he even thinks that you make any sense. Because most men think I make sense. We're number one with men on the radio, and that's why. I believe that, you know why? Because it's so easy to do what you're saying. It's oh, really? Uh, why haven't you done it? I make a lot of money. You want to come on in here and uh, see if you can do it cheaper? Let's not go there, because I make a lot of money, too. I'm a very you don't, intelligent Yeah, oh, really? Well, how much do you make? Excuse me? How much do you make? How much do I make? Do yeah. you really want to know? Yes, I do. I close about two hundred and fifty thousand. Oh, we well, guess what? I made two hundred and fifty thousand dollars last month. Well, good for so, you. So, 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 believe me, me, darling. Don't you try lording your salary over me. I am to do that for me. So, you know what? It doesn't really matter how much I make. I do very well. Yes, on I own. agree. It doesn't matter how much you make. Excuse me. Don't matter to me how much you make, because uh, it still wouldn't be enough to make me sit there and listen to your mouth you look at you're obviously not interested in a woman's worth or a woman's value as a person i'll tell you what a woman's worth is spread your legs let me in 
That's disgusting. And that is, by the way, how your friend feels over there, too. You And I bet you the women that you get are exactly worth it. I them. hope so. Sluts. I hope they are. You know what? And unfortunately, and unfortunately, the men that are listening to you that actually end up listening to your advice. And like your, like out, your friend over there who you've had sex with. Yes. I'm sorry? Like your friend over there who you've had sex with. My ex-fiance, yes. Your ex-fiance. There we go. That's good. He's your ex-fiance. When did that happen? To you. Exactly. Exactly why. Because he listened to me? Because he listened to me. Fantastic. Very nice. Who's bitter now? He's laughing. Oh, my God. Who's bitter? <laughs> who's bitter? Now we know who's but We knew who was bitter when you called in, but uh, come on. Now we know the agenda here. Your ex-fiance broke up with you because he listens to the Tom Likas show, and then he wanted you to hear the show so you could hear what it's all about. And here you are, all <laughs> pissed off and calling up here and cursing at me and everything. But we know what's going on there. You're bitter. You're bitter that your marriage got, your wedding got broken up because of me. No, I'm not bitter. Well, yes, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Fied by you, but honestly, it's because of me. So I can admit that part. Oh, As so, a woman, I can oh, say that. What what's because doing, of you? He broke up with you because of you. Because of me. Because of my mistakes. Yes. Oh, yes. And, what, and what were your mistakes? You screwed his best friend or something. What were your mistakes? No, no. The, my mistakes are mistakes that are going to remain between me and him unless he decides to, you know. Oh, don't me. worry. He'll call me and tell me what your mistakes were. What? Yeah. What is so now we know what's really going on here. You called in and made it sound as if he was not a fan of the show and that you were calling in to agree with him about how terrible I am. But the reality is he's not only a fan of the show, he broke off your engagement because he listens to the show. That's all right. No, you know what? I actually called in because I listened to what you said. And the first thing that came out of your mouth when I turned the radio on was, don't have a girlfriend. Don't have a girlfriend, right? Don't have a girlfriend. Much less a fiancé or a wife. All I'm saying is, is that... I saved his life. Are you kidding me? No wonder he loves the show. I saved his life. I saved him from 60 years of listening to you. You did not. That's horrible. Yes, I did. Because like, I'm not that bad for him to listen. Listening to you for 60 years would have been torture. They would have been torture. I think it would have violated international law. There are laws about torture like that. Are you kidding? No. You know what? Look, all I called you for was two things. Number one, I did make a mistake, and that. I mean, there are there are there are people in Guantanamo Bay who don't have to endure that torture. Just listen. I did make a mistake, and it did mess up my relationship. So you screwed somebody else, like so many of you whores yeah. and sluts out there. I didn't. No, I didn't. No, yeah, I didn't. You did. Not... you did? I did. No, that's not what I did. I lied about some certain situations and listened to people so in my family. So you're a liar, too. And listened to people in my family who... Your mouth, we're on the air. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I apologize. I'm so sorry. If you want to hang up with me, you can. I apologize. <laughs> you, the point is that you uh, you got exactly what you deserved and and thankfully he was listening to the show and had us as a support system for him when 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 you treated him like crap What's wrong about the show is I didn't see the thing is when you treat somebody like crap when a man treats a woman like crap and a woman comes back at him it's not fair for the man to come back and say well you did and you did and you did therefore now I'm going to sleep around and be this big whatever <sighs> Imagine having to listen to this until you're 70 years old. Can you imagine? What is his name? What is it, Mike? Mike. I just want to say, uh, Mike, I know you're out there, and uh, I'm, I'm glad we were there for you in your time of need, saving you from having to listen to this for the next 60 years. You don't have to listen to me for the next 60 years. I'll probably be dead. In and he's, agree he's agreeing with me there. He said he's going to call you tomorrow and tell you what I did to him. Uh, I'm sure he is. You know what? All I have to say is this. Whether women do make a lot of mistakes. and a lot Including of you. Including right now. Us women, we make a lot of mistakes. Including you. I mean to give up completely on relationships. Who needs a relationship? Now we can just bang around. I've given the boys permission to bang anything that moves. And that way, women like you can't carve our hearts out. That is disgusting. No, no, you are disgusting. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show. 
Southern California's FM Talk Station. 97.1 Free FM. 